Perfect. Good. So uh, my name's Matt. I'm the current secretary to the BSH Nurse Forum. And just a little bit of housekeeping to start with. If uh, you could keep your microphones muted during the webinar, unless you're asking a question of any of our presenters, it just keeps the background noise down for us. Um, please do feel free to put questions into the chat. I'm keeping an eye on that and we'll pose your questions to the presenters as we're going through the evening. Or if you prefer to ask your question, uh, please put your hand up and we'll try and bring you on screen to ask your question face to face. We will have a bit of a question and answer session at the end. So if you haven't asked your question during the course of our talks, then do feel free uh, to ask it at the end. And we want you to feel able to engage with us. I promise you we've all had dinner. We're not going to bite anyone tonight. Uh, and we're just keen to be able to engage with you, uh, half headed nurses around the country, with the work that we're doing and give you a sense of how you can get involved with us. Finally, this session will be recorded, so if you do have to leave us early, you can look back at that via the BSH website and the Nurse Forum portal uh, in the next few days. So a little bit about the BSH Nurse Forum. It's been a subcommittee of the BSH for several years now and was initially set up by uh, Jane Masters. And unfortunately, Jane can't join us on the webinar this evening. But uh, before uh, the evening, she sent us a message to say that the Nurse Forum came about really because there were so many heart failure nurses from around the UK who wanted to come together with a desire to drive forward the role of the heart failure specialist nurse, improve education and training and enhance the delivery of excellent treatment and care to our patients. Jane hoped that the forum would grow and would succeed um, over time. And in the last six years, under the sort of previous chairs of, of Karis and the current chair, Poppy, it really has come on to do some great things. And that's what we'd like to talk to you about this evening. So. The nurse forum has 10 uh, core heart failure nurses on it, and those are the PPC on the left. But so we can take a wider Four Nations approach, we have four observers and we're also delighted to have Lawrence Humphrey Davies, the BSH patient representative, join us on the forum as well. So just as we are looking at this from a professional perspective, we're also taking in the patient's perspective at the same time. As we all know, that is something that is uh, super important. You'll hear formally from Poppy, Dallas and Rebecca tonight, but the rest of the team are on the call. So questions will be posed to them throughout the talk this evening and hopefully give you a chance to get a sense of who we all are. So there's three talks lined up for you. Please do ask questions either in the chat, pop your hand up. Firstly, Poppy's going to take us through a, through a look over the last two years and the work we've been doing before Delith takes you through what we're looking at doing at the moment and what we plan to do over the next couple of years and how you can get involved with the work of the Nurse Forum. And Becky will then talk us through how we try and share the output from the Nurse Forum with you guys, because it's no good us doing work if we're not getting that message out to you and helping support you look after your patients. So Poppy, over to you, if I may. Thank you, Matt. Thanks for a great introduction and um, and for being our host with the most this evening. Um, so my name is Poppy Brooks. I'm the current chair of the forum, um, but only for two weeks more. In two weeks, my two years will be up and um, at the annual meeting this year, you will all get to hear who the next chair is. So we wait with bated breath for that announcement. Um, but I would like to say thank you to the whole committee and to everybody else for putting up with me for the last two years. It's been an absolute honour and a pleasure. So as Matt said, um, I'm going to walk through some of the things we get up to in the committee. Um, this list of things is not exclusive. There are lots of various other things that our um, Nurse Forum Committee get involved with in terms of um, contributing to national policy, writing articles, speaking at different places and supporting the BSH um, all over um, as representatives of, of heart failure nursing. We've also potentially got some general practice nurses on the call tonight as well as heart failure nurses. So I'd like to say a big welcome to you and we'll talk about how we've gone about inviting you to join us a bit later on. So obviously one of the first things um, we get very involved in is heart failure awareness weeks and over the last two years the BSH has really pulled it out the bag with some fantastic heart failure awareness raising campaigns. The um, Freedom from Failure, the F word campaign in 2022 was an award winning campaign. Um, the award was given by the ESC um, for how, how good it was. There was fantastic posters and there's still posters and infographics available on the BSH website, which you can download for free and um, use out and about in your local areas. 
we've also had the detected the under detect the undetected uh, can't speak now detect the undetected campaign this year with 25 and 25 which again has been equally impactful and received special recognition again at this year's ESC meeting um HFA ESC meeting so what the nurse forum has done in heart failure awareness week is tried to complement the the campaign of the BSH, tried to support everybody's heart failure awareness campaigning from all organisations and all of our partner organisations. And we wanted to complement the uh, work by doing a few different things of our own. Most of that has been on social media um, where we've been trying to encourage people to get involved. Um, we've had different tutorials that Edith has produced the last two years, which have been really impactful. Those tutorials have reached out to lots of people who are not necessarily usually engaged with heart failure on Twitter and provided some bite sized education as well as some heart failure awareness raising. Um, Teresa Tan, one of our committee members, was involved in the um, Freedom from Failure campaign as part of the Policy and Media Committee, as well as sitting on the Nurse Forum. And also Teresa was in the, one of one of the videos so I would like to just go to Teresa and ask a question about being involved in that campaign what that was like for you and why you think it's important to raise awareness of heart failure thanks Teresa thank you Poppy uh, hi everybody I'm Teresa on Mary Tan um, so um, as Poppy uh, nicely explained about the F word campaign or freedom from failure campaign so the idea of that was to ensure, you know, recognising common symptoms of heart failure um, by patients, by staff, by general public. Um, and that's looking at fatigue, fighting for breath and filling up with fluid. Um, and it's been amazing to work with this campaign um, because it's essentially ensuring that people understand, um, you know, what heart failure is all about and what to look out for. You know, one million patients uh, in the UK and more have heart failure. Um, and that surpasses numbers of, you know, cancers and strokes, and yet the national awareness is quite low. So, um, in essence, this campaign has been amazing in in bringing up that awareness in terms of the posters, um, being involved in the video, um, which had a very uh, motivational um, day in the life of the patients living with heart failure, um, and just seeing how um, they've been uh, managing that and and you know giving tips and hints about how to um, seek help, essentially, so traffic light system. So looking at fatigue, um, obviously, um, you know, you're looking at the patient's feeling breathlessness or tiredness, um, having reduced exercise tolerance, um, if they're fighting for breath, if they're breathless, if they're filling up with fluid. So these are symptoms that may not be specific to heart failure, but at least it will make you know um, in the back of your mind that that patient may have heart failure. Um, and the beauty of working with this committee is that, you know, you get to work with you know, open minded people, like minded people to work within a common goal. And they've actually motivated me um, to kind of um, improve the services that I've led on and worked with to improve recognition of heart failure um, and enabled me to help, you know, write articles and, and do the campaign video, which is very you know worth watching um, if you can on the BSH website. So I've really loved working with them. Thanks, Thanks Teresa. Sorry, was somebody asking a question then? I don't think so. OK, thank you, Teresa. Um, I'm glad you, you've enjoyed being part of, of that and thank you for all your effort it, because it's all work that you do in your own time and one thing you said there which I really struck a chord with me is that common goal and that's one thing that I noticed every heart failure awareness week is how many of us there are out there all striving at this um, to improve awareness of heart failure and improve heart failure care and we've all got that common goal that unites us so that's a really nice feeling to be part of something isn't it mm. so another another thing that we've done um, for heart failure awareness week if we could move on to the next slide please Matt is for the last two years we've held a competition um, so in in the motivation for that is to encourage people to go out and, and do things in their local communities on heart failure awareness week but also we know how tricky it can be for people to get funding to come to bsh meetings so the prizes for that competition has been annual meeting tickets 
And this year's winner, winners were the fantastic team at North Tees and Hartlepool NHS Foundation Trust, who really embedded the 25 in 25 detect the undetected theme into their Heart Failure Awareness Week activities. They engaged in a range of activities across the week, um, including blood pressure checks, quizzes, and each day in their hospital canteen, they had a healthy heart meal. Um, we also had fantastic runners up, including um, Edith team, um, the Southern Health and Social Care Trust. And one thing that struck out reading their entry for, for me was the drawing competition that they had for local primary schools and they really got their local community involved. So I would encourage you to start thinking about what you can do in, in 2024 because we hope to hold the competition again and the entries are really hotting up. Um, but there, there is the opportunity to win those tickets. So the winners this year got two annual meeting tickets and the runners up got one each. So we're looking forward to seeing all of those entry winners at um, the annual meeting in person, which will be lovely. We can move on to the next slide, Matt, thank you. So I, some of you will, will know about these events and others won't. So I'll just explain what the Friends Collaboration is, although it is technically called Friends because we're heart failure nurses, we like to prefix everything with a HEF, so I always call it HEF Friends. And HEF Friends is a collaborative um, group which involves the BSH Nurse Forum, the Diabetes Specialist Nurse Forum and the Association of Nephrology Nurses UK. Um, it's been a project that I've really enjoyed working on because we have brought those three specialties together and there's so much that we can learn from the other nurses. They're fantastic, really driven. Um, and we've had held two face-to-face um, -face meetings um, in July this year and then of the year before, one webinar. And um, next year we've got the um, webinar on the fe February the 29th and another in-person meeting on July the 5th. These are free events for BSH Nurse Forum members, but the places sell out um, get signed up quick so um yeah i'm gonna ask becky more about this because becky's been absolutely key to this work stream she's been involved in this idea since its inception so i would like to ask becky um what it's been like getting this project off the ground what have you taken from it how valuable do you think it is to get specialist nurses together in this way becky Hi, hi, thanks. Yeah, so it was really great for me because I've uh, never been involved in developing a big conference like this from the very beginning. So it was great learning experience for me. And as you say, Poppy, like working with other specialty nurses from other you know, diseases are, is also really insightful because you can see that common goal of trying to improve patient care for our patients, no matter what what the underlying condition is. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't go to the first face to face because I got COVID the week that the conference happened. So Edith very kindly jumped in at the last minute to support. Um, but it's been really good to sort of get to know um, other specialties more closely. And in fact, actually, I now work with somebody on the Diabetes Specialist Nurse Forum. So that's been really great to try and bring that back into our own practice here, here in our locality. Um, and it's been really insightful, you know, to listen to Alison Leary. I could listen to her for hours and then talk about empowering nurses and their specialties. So it's, it was really great to see her in, in person to speak um, and, and really see, you can see the progress the teams are making now to think about how we collaborate with our cardiometabolic streams, you know, and really see that practice helping the patients in, in throughout the UK. Thank you, Becky. Uh, like you say, again, it's a common goal, isn't it? Common goals and common challenges. And, and I found it really empowering to, to be with those other nurses and, and discuss those. And agree with you totally about Alison Leary. What a legend. If you're on Twitter and you don't follow her, I suggest that you do. Um, her talk both years has been incredibly well received with fantastic feedback. On the Hef Friends website, there are some videos from some of these days and her talk from 2022 on the value of specialist nursing. If you want a feel good talk to watch, to empower you, to make you think, yeah, I am going to go out there and prove my value and prove what I need for my team. That's the talk to watch. It's a 20 minute video. I recommend it. Um, I'd also like to ask Lawrence about this work stream. Um, so Lawrence, as Matt said earlier, is one of our observers. Lawrence is actually the chair of the patient advisory panel for the BSH. Um, so I'd really like to hear your view, Lawrence, um, about how it is for patients when they've got lots of different people in, involved in their care and how. what do you think about us uh, working together in our different specialties? Good evening, everyone. Uh, well, I mean, I'm actually humbled by how much the BSH does do. Uh, I mean, uh, it's a slightly smaller organisation than uh, some of the other ones. 
and yet they engender a great collaborative effort through the heart failure community and um, the nursing community in general. I have a lot of time for heart failure nurses, cardiac nurses. I know that they do all the heavy lifting. And by being involved with the BSH uh, and the various committees in the BSH, I can see the spread of the influence and the attention that the BSH give to the cardiac nurses. Uh, I'm fully supportive of everything. I love this idea of 25 in 25, reducing deaths by 25% in 25 years and the first year of heart failure diagnosis. Uh, I think it can be done a lot quicker, but it can only be done quicker by good communication and coordination and collaboration between us all. And uh, from a patient's perspective, I will back anything which helps the patient. And I'll come and see you all. I'll travel around. I'll make the tea. I'll open the doors. Whatever is necessary. I say thank you to you all. I say thank you for coming this evening. And I suggest the Nurses Forum is a very good outlet for you to get your ideas across to the BSH, but also for the BSH to keep you informed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lawrence. That's really um, valuable input and thank you for your kind words. Um, so there may be some general practice nurses on the call this evening um, and obviously um, cardio-renal metabolic nursing, that's very relevant to you too. These patients with long-term conditions, um, whether it be heart failure, diabetes or kidney disease, they are the patients that are coming through your doors. Um, so if you are still members when we are advertising the places for this, then feel free to join us um, on at Hef Friends because your input um, at such an event would be really, really valuable. Um, the other thing just to say quickly before I move on is as part of the HEFRENS um, educational programme, what we're always really looking for is examples of that cohesive working um, across pathways, across specialities in, 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 this three, in these three specialties. So if anybody feels that they've you know, put some um, different pathways in place or any initiatives that really helps to support that, any MDTs or you know, joint clinics or anything that you think we might be interested in, please do let us know because um, we're always looking for speakers and examples of good practice we'd love you to get involved um, if we could move on to the next slide please matt so one of the absolute highs of um, my chairship and actually probably my own my whole career i've peaked now i'm done um was delivering the prestigious linda blue award last year at the annual meeting to this absolutely phenomenal woman that is um yvonne millerick who's a who's a leading voice in heart failure and palliative care as we all know and such a worthy winner of that award we also had fantastic um, nominees from elsewhere across the country, all nurses, but just to remind you, this award is open to AHP and, and pharmacists as well. All of the nominations were absolutely phenomenal. And what I'd like to say to you this evening is that um, next year will be the annual, um, will be the Linda Blue Award again, because it's biannually. Um, so I'd like you to start thinking about who you're going to nominate. And um, I would like to ask Karis if she's got any tips for people on filling in their nomination forms and what sort of things to think about um, when doing that. Thank you, Karis. So um, we, we brought about the Linda Blue Award because um, obviously the late Linda Blue was our first ever heart failure specialist nurse with her um, real life changing um, randomised control trial in 2001. Um, and that's from that small acorn all of us have grown. Um, I think what I would say is that I, I, I knew Linda um, and Silipia and I worked with her together at uh, Guy's and St Thomas's um, on, a, on a big heart failure project. And uh, she became a very, very dear friend. And one of the things that I would say about her and what I think this, this award really represents personally for me, as she was a dear friend of mine as well, was that she was very humble in her leadership. She gave opportunity to others, um, including myself, uh, and she she offered up opportunity, expertise, um, and and 
anything she could to bring on the next generation of heart failure nurses. She really was a very special lady. And I think it's important that when you're nominating somebody for this award, that you're thinking about, you know, it, it, it's probably slightly intimidating that, you know, the great Jane Masters and the fantastic Yvonne Miller have already been the, the award winners for the first two awards we've ever had. But actually, you know, we know that you're doing such fantastic work all over the country. There are so many humble unsung heroes doing really miraculous work for their heart failure patients day in and day out. And please think about somebody that that you think would emulate those behaviours that we're talking about Linda having um, trailblazing. Um, you know, she was she was she was like I say, she was very humble in her leadership um, and we really want to recognise people that show excellence in heart failure care. And that could be, you know, something that appears very small to you, but that's been massively impactful in your area and to your patients. Um, please do think about the people that you work directly with. Um, it's not just big names and people we've all heard of and everything. So many of you are fantastic. Look around you, look at your colleagues and think, do you know what, they made a real difference here. They made a real difference to me. They made a real difference to their patients. Think about that very carefully. I'd, I bet you could reach out and touch these people every day that are, are worthy worthy winners. And we wish you had more of them to be able to hand out to, in all honesty. So that's all I would say. Have a look around, see who you think could actually emulate those behaviours, who passes it forward, who um, is there for the greater good of everybody else and is humble. Oh, thank you, Lawrence. Well, feel free to. <laughs> Thanks, Poppy. Thank you, Karis. That's perfect. Um, I echo everything Karis says. You know, there's so much wonderful work going on out there. So it'll be wonderful to again see some fantastic nominees. I don't know if I'll get to see it. We'll decide um, who's on the judging committee, but we usually have, you know, a patient representative. I think we, Lawrence, you helped, didn't you? I think um, last time, as well as some heart failure nurses and some, um, we have a, a AHP and uh, medical representation on, on who makes helps to make that decision as well. So if you can really just get out on paper all the things that Karis said about your colleague that you're going to nominate, then that's really going to help them have a chance. Um, but I just think everybody who's nominated should be recognised as well. They're all fantastic, inspiring people. Um, can we move on to the next slide, please, Matt? So one thing um, the committee launched this year was the BSH um, Nurse Forum Quality Improvement Academy. So QI stands for Quality Improvement. And we know that we see a lot of our junior doctor colleagues doing quality improvement projects and things on the wards. And they sometimes might help us to ask us to get involved. Um, and as nurses, I think we really are often the drivers for change and we deliver a lot of service improvements um, and changes within our departments. So when we had the opportunity to deliver this programme for 10 heart failure nurses and bespoke it specifically for heart failure nurses, we, we were really thrilled to do that. Um, I want to ask Delith more about this because Delith has really put some time into this, which I very much appreciate, both in designing the programme alongside um, our quality improvement training team, Steve and Michelle and, um, and, and Becky and myself. And so I want to ask Delith about her experience with the programme and how it's been to be a mentor on this programme. Good evening, everyone. Um, just to give you a bit of a background, um, I had the privilege uh, to have been given the opportunity to be part of the 2021-22 uh, cohort of the Emerging Leaders Programme uh, run by the British Cardiovascular Society in partnership with the American College of Cardiology. And uh, within that programme, I had the opportunity to hear from, you know, experts themselves about leadership and healthcare delivery. And it gave me great insight into the wider NHS infrastructure and agenda and also, also to gain a greater understanding of sort of different personalities and working styles and the way that which we work. And as part of that course, I had to undertake a QI project. And through that process, um, I learned the skills really to undertake such a project, which really helped me to um, equip me really to support others and mentor in the QI Academy. Uh, the experience of the QI Academy has been absolutely fantastic, uh, more than I, I, I could have imagined really. Um, we, we all got together in September, uh, several months after the course started, and um, the, everyone had the opportunity to uh, talk about their projects. And I was completely blown away uh, by the work that's already been done in such a short space of time. 
uh, and the dedication and motivation to, to make some real change um, you know, within our workplace has been very visible throughout the course. And it's just really exciting to see the developments of the project and see the progress so far. Um, it's been an honour to be a mentor and, you know, that even to just, um, you know, be part of the programme itself. And I just hope that, um, you know, in the future we could potentially run another one. We're unsure whether we're going to be able to do that at the moment. But just to see the, the work that has been done so far and the enthusiasm with everyone involved in that has been an absolute privilege. And I just can't wait to see the posters and the outcomes of that work that has been done next year. Hey, I wanted to ask Hayley actually, um, so Hayley is uh, you know, doing the course, I wanted to ask you about your experience with the QI. Oh hi Jeliv, yeah I mirror a lot of what you're saying actually, um, it's given me a greater understanding of the actual QI process, um, which you know I had um, some experience but it's given me a, a much more in-depth knowledge of what actually goes on and what I need to do, the whole process of it all. Um, it's given me the opportunity to explore ideas, um, and analyse what we do in our current practice um, and the processes that we follow at the moment and whether they're up for scratch or not. Um, and I think as nurses, we don't always get the opportunity to take part in any of these sorts of um, projects to sort of improve our services. So I think for going through this, this um, process, it's given me time really to have a look at what we can do. Um, and I think that time to, to undertake these projects has been really invaluable. Um, um, yeah, so to undertake the process um well so i think it just really adds value to what we do every single day you know um the meetings with the mentor um my mentors michelle it's been invaluable really um it's, it's really helped a lot and she's been very supportive and i feel she's left me feeling really empowered the whole process has left me feeling really empowered i want to go and change the world <laughs> no really positive experience i've really enjoyed it um and i can't wait till uh till april and uh and present what i've been doing yeah we can't wait either. Thanks, Hayley. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank, thank, thank you, Delif, and thank you, Hayley. I'm, I'm glad that's been your experience, and I absolutely can see why you feel like that, because I've absolutely loved being part of it too. The um, That day that you mentioned, Delif, when everybody got together in September and presented what their projects were going to be, I've never felt so proud to be a heart failure nurse as, as that day and and to be a nurse because not all of our, our QI participants are heart failure nurses but they're all cardiology nurses and it they all of the projects related to the wider BSH 25 and 25 strategy everybody was so enthusiastic so um look out um for the posters they're going to be displayed in um Glasgow at the MDT meeting which is going to be held on April the 25th and 26th next year so you save the dates in your diary and we hope that we will have a competition for the participants and the winning poster, the person who has won will be asked to present at the annual meeting next year. So that's a brilliant opportunity for, for our heart failure nurses and also recognition of, of hard work that they've all put in. Um, if we could move on to the next slide, please, Matt. Thank you. So um, I didn't think we should not mention the 25 and 25 strategy. I'm really hoping that most people on the webinar will have heard about the 25 and 25 strategy, um, that you will hear more about it at the annual meeting in more depth. And there's plenty of information on the BSH website. Um, but it all kicked off on the 9th of March this year with a summit um, where there was representation from lots of different partner organisations across many specialities and across different parts of the globe as well and um, Edith was there in representation of the Northern Ireland Heart Failure Nurse Forum. Edith is one of our committee members as well but she's also the chair of Northern Ireland Heart Failure Nurse Forum so I would like Edith to tell us a bit more about her experience of the day and what you think Edith is the role for nursing within the 25 in 25 strategy. Yeah, thanks, Poppy. Hi, everyone. So, yes, I was very fortunate to be invited and to represent the Northern Ireland Heart Failure Nurses at the summit. Um, it always sounds very grand when you're going to a summit, and it certainly was quite an imposing day, I suppose. Um, it's a very ambitious strategy that the BSH have set, reducing heart failure deaths by 25% over 25 years. Very ambitious. And as Poppy said, there was lots of national and international delegates from lots of different specialities there. 
So the day really, I suppose, was there was some brainstorming, there was some information giving, and it was really, I suppose, to set the scene and kick things off about how we can get this strategy moving. And there's a lot of high level work going on. But I suppose what struck me and what I thought about was, you know, things do happen at a high level. And sometimes as a nurse going to work as a heart failure nurse every day, you can kind of think, well, what, what has that got to do with me and how can I actually influence any of that at my level? And I think the answer to that is we've already heard it this evening. And I think the BSH has showcased that we're probably already as nurses doing that already every day and we're all working for the same common goal i've heard that loads this evening we're all working collaboratively um and if we think about the four strands of 25 and 25 that's all about early identification we want to make sure people are diagnosed early they're treated appropriately and they have a good quality of life well we're doing that through all our collaborative practice through hef rens and um, we're raising awareness of the condition through the heart failure awareness week the QI Academy, as Poppy says, it's all very much aligned to, you know, the objectives and the QI projects are all very much aligned to the BSH 25 and 25. So I think a lot of the work that the Nurse Forum is doing probably already reflects it. But I think probably a lot of the work that we do as nurses every day reflects it because we're all collaborative working. We're all co working collaboratively in our everyday practice. We all see patients who see ourselves, who go to diabetes clinics, who go to leg clinics, who go to COPD clinics. And I think as nurses, as heart failure nurses, we have a collective responsibility to upskill and educate our colleagues in heart failure who are working in these other clinics, find out who they are, find out what they do, invite them to your local study days, invite them to your lunch and learn sessions. Can you get an invite to their sessions? Get your face known. So at a very grassroots local level, I think there's loads that we can do as heart failure nurses to try and influence the recognition of heart failure and do our tiny collective bit for the 25 and 25 strategy. Wonderful. Thank you, Edith. That's perfect. Um, I think there's so much opportunity in nursing for detecting the undetected, for sure. Um, Lawrence, from your perspective, you were there um, with the patient advisory panel. Um, and as you know, we've got communities um, that are going to be called fast track communities that are going to pilot a community way of working to tackle heart failure. And we're all going to have some learning from that. What do you hope to see in the early stages of this strategy? What are your key priorities as a patient for us all to focus on? Well, as Edith touched on, I mean, I was just so impressed by how many uh, other organisations had pulled together behind this campaign and from a patient's perspective i don't actually mind who gets the credit everyone should get the credit but this will be impossible without the cardiac nurses and the nurses in general working to put this to fruition so i'm very very pleased that so many so many other organizations are behind it and backing it but um, they're actually going to be backing you nurses because you nurses will be absolutely key to the rollout of it. Uh, yes, we need the powers that be behind it, but you'll be the troops on the ground and the patients will really, really appreciate this. It will make a massive difference if it's successful. And I see no reason why it shouldn't be successful if we all work together to make to ensure that it is. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lawrence. That's really helpful. Thank you. Um, shall we move on to the next slide? So um, with the values of 25 and 25 in mind, um, the last work stream I'm going to tell you about is our um, round table events that we've held with general practice nursing. So um, Louise Brady, who's the primary care nursing lead NHS England, and I um, got together to um, to set up um, these round table meetings to discuss how we can collaborate with general practice nurses, because I think general practice nurses have 84 million face to face appointments per year, and that's a phenomenal opportunity to um, reduce risk and detect the undetected. Um, Silla Peer, you've been a vital part of this work stream. You have um, were at the very first roundtable event and um, you've written a piece on it. Do you want to tell us more about um, your hopes for our working together and what you think some of the opportunities might be? 
Yes, certainly. So uh, as we know, 80% of heart failure diagnoses are currently made as acute admissions, but four in 10 of those patients have been to their GP uh, with signs and symptoms of heart failure in the months or even longer before they present to hospital. So there's a, a crucial role for uh, identifying heart failure earlier in the primary care. And we know that if we identify people earlier, their mortality is better. And, and we could prevent them uh, coming into hospital in extremis and get them on evidence-based medicines earlier. So there's a crucial role for uh, GPs and, G and particularly GP nurses or general practice nurses who um, see patients uh, can have a crucial role in health liter literacy. Um, people know a lot about heart attacks, but they don't necessarily know a lot about heart failure. And so can we, uh, through the enormous number of appointments that general practice nurses offer patients, uh, get patients more aware of signs and symptoms of heart failure, perhaps even asking questions directly about symptoms and uh, promoting earlier identification of heart failure patients uh, before they come into hospital. So that that's the first thing, but obviously there's uh, uh, going to be education needed there. There's going to need to be uh, a program of um, development, perhaps, in support of the 25 and 25 initiative uh, coming more into the primary care and beyond the specialist gaze, as it were. So I, I think there's an enormous role that uh, general practice nurses play um, with um, uh, improving patient lives, particularly through their long-term conditions clinics and uh, their other um, screening clinics with patients in their hypertension clinics, their diabetes clinics, etc. So there's enormous opportunity here and we very much would like to support the emergence of uh, uh, the role of the general practice nurse in early identification of heart failure. Thank you, Silpia. I totally agree with everything you said. Um, so we've offered a three month free trial membership to general practice nurses that just opened on the 10th of November for three months. So um, tell your general practice nursing colleagues that they can join us. We've started a little chat in the um, forum on the members portal to welcome them. And um, hopefully if we if we can speed up and not stay over time as we are now. Sorry, everybody. If any of you are on the call, um, you can say hello and, and we can find out how, who you are or you can say hello in the chat. But welcome to to any general practice nurses who are here and then I've just got one more quick slide so um, I just really want to recognise these three um, we with the changeover of the nurse forum um, as I said in December my two years is up that also means that Karis's two years as past chair is up um, Matt and Silla Peer have both been on the nurse forum for a considerable amount of time now and so they will be stepping away but I hope that they might come back one day and I hope that they will both stay involved in the BSH. Um, Karis was a phenomenal chair and past chair. Um, she delivered not only the competency document but really grew the membership and the influence of the forum. Matt's been a brilliant secretary and I'm really grateful to him for keeping me in line and um, Silla Peer you've put in so much hard work and I'm just grateful grateful to all three of you for the hours of time you've given to the forum. It wouldn't be what it is without any of you and um, good luck and we hope to continue seeing you in BSH work streams. Um, but I better now pass over to Delith for the next bit. Thank you. Lovely. Uh, thank you, Poppy. So um, following on from uh, Jane Masters's work with the BSH with the uh, UK Heart Failure Serving Mapping Survey to evaluate services, um, it demonstrated a disparity in bandings in the workforce. You know, people have been asked to do different things at the same banding. 
So um, we developed a work stream really to look at reviewing scopes and roles uh, by creating a, a sort of a template uh, for, we, we started with band six, band seven, um, heart failure nursing roles, uh, but we're hoping to uh, then go on to, you know, the eight day post and so on. So um, to date, we've had one meeting, um, which, you know, we, we progressed quite a lot. Uh, we looked at lots and lots of, um, you know, different sort of job descriptions uh, from across you know all, all, all four nations um, and you know we, we did we did progress quite a bit with that but it was really quite exciting but this um, work stream is a new work stream and one that we will be continuing into the next year so as I said we started with the band six and band seven specialist roles initially so we're looking at uh, reviewing clinical responsibilities um, knowledge training and experience uh, and in it, analytical judgment skills, responsibility for patient client care. Um, and the aim is to make a clear differential between the different bands, so for more consistency, less disparity. Um, and then we're going to look at also the organisational structure for a heart failure team and look at clear access to consultant nursing and so on. And when we've done this, we, we're hoping that to take it to um, a matching panel then um, to have that you know, more validated. So Becky is involved in this work stream. What, what are your thoughts about this, Becky? Yeah, so it's it's really clear, isn't it, that the the different bandings for different roles throughout throughout the region, and and that then makes it really difficult to show what what each nurse's responsibilities are. Um, you know, I said before, Alison Leary really does inspire you to really showcase the role of heart failure nurses, and I think it it's really good to try and support our teams to fight for the right banding for the work that they do. Um, it, it's really difficult in some trust to really prove that you're worth, despite what what you know you're doing for your services so having some sort of validated framework that we can take back to our trust to really advocate for our teams I think will be invaluable. Oh lovely thanks Becky. Uh, can we move on to the next slide please Matt? Oh lovely thank you. Um, so we know the uh, overarching mission of the uh, BSH Nurse Forum is to advance heart failure nursing practice, uh, ensuring that every patient with heart failure has access to and has the support of a fully skilled, competent heart failure specialist nurse. So we are a subcommittee, as you know, of the BSH, and um, you know the BSH has approximately 900 nurse members, if I'm right, um, in saying that. And I think we're continually um, increasing in numbers, which is, which is fantastic. Um, so uh, the Nurse Forum has three voluntary positions opening on the steering committee, which is a really exciting opportunity. Uh, so we're looking for enthusiastic and motivated heart failure specialist nurses. And we want to try to harness the incredible talent that we have within our membership and welcome all applications. Um, so you'll be working with nine other members of the committee under the leadership of the BSH Nurse Forum Chair. Um, so as a committee, we meet uh, about four to six times a year, um, either face to face or virtually. Um, and the, the position shouldn't really exceed uh, two to four hours a month of your time. Um, there are sort of work streams outside of the committee meeting. So whatever work streams that you're involved with, um, then, you know, you, you may um, incur further meetings in relation to that work stream. Um, so if you're interested, uh, which I hope you are, because you've attended this evening, um, you know, please send your CV and covering letter uh, providing information um, on what you can bring to the committee. And uh, the email address uh, for that is administrator at bsh.org.uk uh, by 5 p.m. on Friday the 8th of December so plenty of time to think about it um, so full membership of the BSH is required and uh, committee members must be uh, registered um, with um, with the BSH as, as members for that so and we hope by the end of the webinar that we've given you a taste of what we do and the opportunities that are available and our progress so far and we would be absolutely delighted if you would like to join us and be able to commit your time because it is in our own time um, but if you are interested you can send our applications to us by the 8th of December and if we can move on to the next slide please 
Um, so the one before that, sorry, Matt. Um, so that the there was an advert there. So um, if you could spread the word widely amongst your heart billionaires nursing colleagues, um, you know, within your teams, uh, within your area, um, we would be most grateful. We hope that we've got the word out um, and that you have already uh, seen that. But um, we're hoping as well to have that on the program um, for the conference, and so we can spread the word further in relation to those opportunities. Lovely. Uh, next slide, please, Matt. So I also wanted to talk about um, the fact that we have observers to the committee as well. Um, so these positions are co-opted members from the different regional heart failure nurse forums, and they're invited for their valuable contributions in discussion and collaboration on mutually beneficial work streams and as an observer and a point of contact with their respective heart failure nurse forum. Um, so the observers uh, will sit for the time determined by their terms of office of their nominating nurse forum um, and these members can submit expressions of interest for vacancies and if successful would then be able to stand on the same terms as other committee members. So uh, we have observers from the Scottish Heart Failure Nurse Forum, from the Welsh Heart Failure Nurse Forum, Northern Irish and um, Northern Ireland, sorry, and Irish Association of Heart Failure Nurses. And also uh, we have representatives of the BSH Patient Advisory Panel. So um, they also attend the meetings quarterly and as the need arises, feeding back to the different forums and are involved in work streams, um, and, and which, which is fantastic. So um, Jill, unfortunately, was not able to join us this evening, but she, um, you want, I wanted to sort of hear some feedback really from the observers and um, uh, we'll ask some observers on the, on the, call, uh, the call now shortly, um, you know, I know how they've experienced it so far, but Jill um, feels that the role has offered her an opportunity to liaise with our four nations, uh, despite huge differences in service delivery, and it results in a more sort of joined up approach to quality improvement, representation and collaboration. So our newest um, observer on, on, on the call this evening is Mered Lehan from the Irish Association of Heart Failure Nurses. Uh, Mered, how have you found the role so far? Hi, Della. Thanks very much. I have found it um, a wonderful experience because the Irish Association of Heart Failure Nurses is relatively new. We're only about four and a half years in existence. So we're in awe really of the BSH and, and we aspire to, to follow in your footsteps. So to have that collaboration and that direct contact to people that have been working in the BSH for a very long time, it's hugely important for us as an organisation, but for me personally, as a member of the BSH, you know, to be able to develop my own practice, my own role. Um, so it's it's been a wonderful experience. And particularly during COVID, I suppose, to be able to reach out to different people and get some perspective and encouragement and peer support and that collaboration and um, money can't buy that kind of support you know so we're we're thrilled to be involved and thanks very much for including us Oh, thanks, Mered. We're absolutely thrilled to have you involved as well. Uh, no, so to have the nurse forum with uh, representation from all four nations is incredibly important to us. And and we've got Hayley Rose, who's um, an observer from uh, from Wales. How have you found the experience? Yeah, I think I can mirror what Jill and Mary are saying as well. It's just been an amazing opportunity to link in with the committee. Um, it's uh, just to see what's happening across all of the four nations. I think it's, you know, helping to build a stronger community network um, through collaboration, working really. But I find it's also given the opportunity for benchmarking, learning through other people's practices, you know, and experiences. Um, you get benefit from the peer support, networking, um, and just the opportunity to participate in events and, and the work streams as well. So, yeah, amazing experience. Thanks, Thank Hayley. <laughs> and Lawrence um, is one of our observers from the PSH Patient Advisory Panel. And what are your thoughts, Lawrence? Well, I mean, I've observed the way that um, the efforts have been put into making sure that there's a minimum standard of care across the countries. And, you know, it's it's all very well and good to say we've got great care, but it's patchy. And the Nurses Forum, the BSH as well, but the Nurses Forum really comes together to bring that minimum level that the patients deserve 
across the 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 four nations and and the observers can see that and best practice can be adopted everywhere and i think these committees or this committee in particular um does that because it pulls together people from all over the place and uh, i see it time and time again that you know new knowledge is imparted uh, new questions are raised, answers are given, and if the answers aren't available, guess what? They go away and find them. And I'm really, really appreciated, uh, appreciative of that. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Lawrence. And a lot of um, uh, the team here have given their email addresses there in the in the chat box, and I'll put mine shortly as well. So please feel free to get in touch, and you know, even if you want to have a conversation by email or face to face, or at, um, in the um, in London, you know, please come and talk to us, and 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 we can discuss what we do more with you, and and if we can support you in in putting an application in. Um, I I had support to do that, and if I hadn't have, you know, I I would have maybe felt a bit nervous. About about doing it but I'm so glad that I did uh, because it's given me so much opportunity and also so much support to do other things as well um, anyway I'm aware that time is, is running away so I'm going to hand over to Becky now thanks Becky so thanks everybody yes I'm, I'm conscious of the time too so I just have a few slides really about how we as a nurse form are trying to communicate with the rider group about the efforts that we go to, but also try and increase engagement from non committee members to get involved in the projects that we do. So the first thing we we have is our blog. So we've had some great um, blogs so far. Poppy did a great one when we first started the new platform about the nurse forum and trying to hear from other members. Uh, Silapia did a really fantastic blog about caseloads and the, the pressures we're all under in terms of the increasing needs of our services. Um, Edith wrote a really great discussion point about ejection fraction and management and how we um, manage patients bearing in mind the 25 and 25 message. And Teresa did one um, sort of showing what we achieved with the Hef Friends conference and so our hope is with these blogs that we show the initiatives that we get involved in um, and spread the word of upcoming events. Um, Matt if you go to the next slide please. So another way of communicating is through the the newsletter which was just a way of us thinking how else can we get to as many people as possible to engage in feedback about projects that we're getting involved in and trying to get people to think about how they can get involved so I hope those newsletters are helpful we have we put a lot of work into trying to get the message across so it's really really important that we um you know hear back from you um Matt the next one please and another way we get involved is representing ourselves at various conferences. So this was my table as I sat at the British Echo Society conference in Wales recently. Um, and this is a really, really cool place to get involved and speak to um, people, spread the word what, from both the BSH and the Nurse Forum perspective and really discuss with people that you don't know, you know, how, how you get involved in projects. We also, next slide, Matt, have the very connect messaging, so making connections with people. You know, sometimes it's a question about a policy or, or a question about, you know, getting together, um, how we can work together and collaborate. And so I think the more connections we make, the better. And then finally, Matt, the next slide. Um, so, oh, it's just about us as a group. So, you know, the, as we've all said throughout this webinar, you know, we really, work really well together when we support each other it's a lot of peer support both professional and supporting each other when we're having hard times um one question i wanted to add ask the sort of the newer members so teresa and leslie you know how, how did you feel about applying to be on the nurse forum what did you feel when i know i felt nervous when i first put my hat in the ring about being involved um and, and once you've been involved in the process H have those feelings changed are you glad you did what what you're doing so we I know both Teresa and Leslie are there so shall I go first Teresa yeah um, why don't you yeah uh very apprehensive at first it was a big step to actually apply I think I kind of did it off my own back really didn't have somebody sort of helping like Delith said she did but I am so glad now that I did it it was a bit I think at first I found it quite daunting sort of to be 
virtually in a room with people that you'd seen speaking on national platforms and you're suddenly sitting alongside them um but I've been made to feel so welcome and I think I've got so much out of it and I would encourage anybody to do it I'm more than happy to talk to anybody about it I think just to be able to sit in a room with like-minded people and share your experience um share the good things about what we do share the hard times and know that there's somebody somewhere has has probably been through the same thing and you're not alone because I think we can often become quite siloed in our um our own little organization but to actually be to sit with people who are experiencing the same challenges and the same triumphs is is just really encouraging Great, thank you. That's really powerful. And I can see Teresa, poor Teresa's lost her mic, but she sort of yep. put something in the chat, similar lines. And I guess my, my final question really is to Karis, looking at the evolution of the Nurse Forum through the various um, committees, um, you know, do you have any sort of insight about what you've observed? I'll tell you what I've observed. I've observed that I came in before you because you're all so fantastic and have just done such amazing things that I'm glad I don't have to follow up behind that, not to put any pressure on the people that are joining you. I know what Leslie means by saying, that, you know, we've seen, I remember when I went to my first board meeting and we, we've uh, I'd only ever really seen these people on the stage and I was in awe, but actually we're all, we're all people all striving for the same thing, all trying to do the same thing and get to the same, same goal, which is excellence in, in heart failure patient care at the end of the day isn't it um, but also we need to support each other um, a great deal like you said and I, I do think we do that very very well um, we, we we made a joke before we opened up the uh, the webinar this evening to say that we've not had a crossword and we haven't we just we're, we're just you know we're all we're all traveling in the same direction all with the same aims all with the same values um, and that that is so powerful and the fact that we've got so many heart failure nurses um, and now we've got these excellent GP nurses as well, our primary care nurses, you know, the fact that we make up so much of the membership, you're a really, really powerful voice for change and not just locally, although your local changes are really important. Um, but, you know, this this forum have had um, have had opportunities at national and international level to make strategic real change. Um, and I'm exceptionally proud of all of the nurses for doing that. And you know how they've done it? They've done it because they care and they have the passion to do so. Um, we can throw PhDs and master's degrees at all the nurses in the world. But uh, at the end of the day, these people are very, very driven and they're all here for the right reason. So if you think you're here for the right reason, you think that you're driven and you want that, you want that support and have that passion, please, please do think about joining. They're a fantastic group, honestly. I, I, I could not speak highly enough of them. Thank you very much, Karis. And actually, my final slide is the advert again, which I think is perfectly timed following from what you've just said. So, so thank you very much. So thank you, Poppy, Delith, uh, Becky. I certainly feel inspired. And if I wasn't just about to leave the nurse form, I'd probably think about putting an expression of interest for myself. We have two or three minutes left. If anyone in the audience wants to put their hand up and ask a question to anyone you've heard talking to you this evening, that'd be great. Flicking through the chat while we're doing that, certainly a lot of love for the Heffrens Day. Uh, certainly people have found that very useful. And I'm also very pleased to say a lot of love for heart failure nurses in the chat, certainly uh, from Lawrence, our greatest cheerleader. And for that, we're always grateful, Lawrence. Thank you so much. So, I think that in summing up as we're sort of a minute to the end I'd like to thank you all again just for joining us this evening and, and for being part of something hopefully you feel is a, a great uh, committee to join and I echo everyone else when I was asked to join the nurse forum six years ago I was like oh why me I mean I'm just not going to be good enough I don't feel I have the confidence for that and I think as heart failure nurses, we generally put ourselves down and don't feel we have the skills, don't feel we have the ability to be able to drive things forward. 
But if you are sitting at home feeling that you will not be good enough, rest assured, I can almost certainly guarantee that you are good enough. And we would be delighted to have you come and join us on the Nurse Forum, because without new people coming through, we're not going to be able to continue with the good work that we've been doing over the last six or seven years. So we will all be at the BSH annual meeting on the 30th of November, and the 1st of December, titled Collaboration, Coordination, Cooperation. And I think tonight we're adding the fourth C, although we're probably not allowed, and that's communication, because without that, that we will not achieve anything that we want to achieve. Do pop along and say hello, particularly if you've not had a chance to ask a question this evening or you didn't feel able to ask us questions on the uh, Teams call tonight. Expressions of interest, as the advert says, will close on the 8th of December, and I've put details in the chat as to how you can apply with your CV and your expression of interest. And finally, I think, think a little bit as well about um, who you would want to nominate for your Linda Blue Award. Karis put it so beautifully that this is a prestigious award born out of someone who really did give us the groundwork to be the heart failure nurses we are today. The first winner was Jane Masters, and she said again, uh, you know, so she could contribute to this evening, that it was the highlight of her career. Linda was her friend, her role model and her inspiration. She felt too that there were many more nurses more deserving of winning that award than she was, but was truly honoured and delighted to receive it just as we'd be delighted to receive your expressions of interest uh, to the Nurse Forum. I wish you all a very pleasant rest of your evening once again. Thank you for your time and for listening to us this evening. Take care, everybody, and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye.